This is part two of five, covering chapter three, the chemical basis of life, part two. In the first part, you learned about organic chemistry, the importance of carbon. We also talked about monomers, how these monomers can be put together by the condensation or dehydration reaction to form polymers. Then I also looked at how these polymers can be broken down by the hydrolysis reaction to go back to those building blocks or those monomers. In the next four parts, we're going to be looking at the four different types of organic molecules. So we have carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. This part's going to focus on the carbohydrates, the very first group of organic molecules. So carbohydrates, they're composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. And generally, they have the molecular formula, so they have CN, H2ON. And that N can be any number. Usually for carbohydrates, it's a 5 or a 6, so you have C5H2O5 or C6H2O6. The monomer for carbohydrates, remember monomer are those building blocks is called a saccharide or a sugar. If you have one of these saccharides, it's called a monosaccharide. Mono means one, so just one saccharide. These monosaccharides are really simple sugars, and these are those five or six carbon rings. If you look at the diagram on the slide, we have a six carbon ring. The carbons are numbered in the red numbers. So you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Other rings are only five carbons. Those are called the pento sugars. Two pento sugars that you're going to see are ribose and deoxyribose. And we're going to see those when we look at the nucleic acids. The six carbon sugars, like the ring structure we looked at on the slide, those are called hexo sugars. One type of hexo sugar is called glucose. And we're going to see glucose show up quite a bit in this course. If you link two monosaccharides together, you're going to get something called a disaccharide. So these are carbohydrates composed of two monosaccharides, two of these building blocks for carbohydrates. These monosaccharides, we're going to join them together by the dehydration reaction. And the bond that's formed between your two monosaccharides is called a glycosidic bond. This glycosidic bond can also be broken apart by the opposite of the dehydration reaction, which is the hydrolysis reaction. So remember, hydrolysis reaction, you just add water, and then your polymer breaks apart into the monomers. Examples of disaccharides include sucrose, which is table sugar, maltose, which is a sugar we use to make alcoholic beverages. Then the third example is lactose, which is a milk sugar. This diagram is showing how sucrose is created. Up at the top, we have our two reactants. We have glucose, which is a hexo sugar. And we're going to attach that to a fructose ring right here. And fructose is another type of sugar. So we take our glucose and our fructose we join them together by the dehydration reaction and you're going to form the glycosidic bond between your two monomers. In addition, you get your water molecule and that's what makes it the dehydration reaction. If you attach more than two saccharides together, you're going to end up with a polysaccharide. So many monosaccharides, many of those building blocks, many of those monomers, we link them together one at a time to form really large and long polymer molecules. So again, poly means many, 
so many of these saccharides hooked together. Examples of polysaccharides are ones that are used for energy storage. This includes starch, which you find in potatoes and other plants. That's how plants store energy. Another type of energy storage is glycogen. This is how humans store energy. And usually this energy storage is really short-term energy storage. So if you're sitting around, you start to get hungry, your body's going to start to break down the glycogen that it has stored in the liver. So short-term energy storage. Other polysaccharides are used for structural support. This includes cellulose, which is fiber in plants, chitin, which makes up the exoskeleton or that hard covering on lobsters, crabs, insects, so that exoskeleton. Glycoaminoglycans, these are found in animals. And they're usually found in cartilage, so they help give, for example, structure to your ears. This is what starch looks like. So starch is found in potatoes and other plants. It's for short-term energy storage. And if you look at the molecule, you see these little green kind of, not circles, but the green monomers, and they're all hooked together. So you can see that there's many, many saccharides hooked together to make up the starch molecule. This image shows glycogen in our liver. So this is how humans and other animals store energy. And again, you can see the green monomers, and they're all bonded together. And this molecule has lots of branches, so it looks kind of messy. And that's where we have our energy storage. Cellulose, which is more used for structure in plants, Cellulose is very, very highly structured, so you see the green monomers in lines, and you also see hydrogen bonding between the long lines of cellulose. And this, again, is fiber. So this part of Chapter 3 was all about carbohydrates. So kind of the main points, carbohydrates, you have lots of carbon, lots of hydrogen molecules bonded together. The monomer is a saccharide, and then you can have monosaccharides, disaccharides, and then polysaccharide molecules. Most carbohydrates in cells are either used for short-term energy storage, like the starch and glycogen, or the carbohydrates can be used for structure, like the cellulose and chitin that we looked at.